Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. Okay, I was um, kind of lost. Me había perdido en el camino, pero ya estoy aquí. I'm so sorry for the waiting. Um, I was in another group, but now this is the uh, the correct group. So um, I'm sorry for being late. Uh, my name is Elena Chavarria, and I am the uh, the um, wait, give me a second. All right, teacher. Okay, we are going to start because of the time. Eh, vamos a ir comenzando. Eh, the first thing that we have, eh, we are going to talk about the, eh, the platform. And we have the first topic that is, okay, no problem, right? Right. Yes, okay. So okay. we are going to start with uh, that topic that is the number one of this course. We are going to see uh, and listen a conversation between uh, family members. And uh, then we are going to have some practice of the conversation. And after that, we have um, uh, some information about two part verbs. That is um, the first topic that we are going to use to solve the problems in the platform. So we have the first one. That is the uh, the conversation. So we are going to listen the conversation. Then we are going to practice this same conversation um, between the family members. And then we are going to um, read something about the two-part verbs. And we have some exercise to develop for today's uh, session. So we are going to start with this one. That is the number one. Okay, no problem. If you have troubles uh, seeing the uh, video or listen the uh, conversation, you can tell me, and I am going to um, share the screen again. But I'm going to put this on. Uh, no listen we can't hear okay. the sound we cannot okay. hear the sound I am going, okay i'm going to stop sharing the screen and i am going to share it again okay again and let's see Let's go. This time you will not only listen to a conversation, but you will also notice two part verbs or phrasal verbs. Pay attention to turn down, pick up, and so on. Try to write them down as they will help you for later usage. Listen and practice. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better. Thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, Mom. I'm on the phone. All right, but do it as soon as you hang up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Okay, that is the conversation. The kids are watching the TV and one of them is uh, talking on the phone. So they are making some noise and dad is asking for um, turn off the volume. And then we are going to listen once again. 
then we are going to practice the same conversation and so on. In the, the sentences that are in the conversation. Try to write them down as they will help you for later usage. Listen and practice. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. That's better. Thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, Mom. I'm on the phone. All right, but do it as soon as you hang up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. Okay. Now that we have listened to the conversation twice, we are going to have the conversation on the screen, just the conversation. Then we are going to read the sentence that appears in the conversation and make some practice. So we have this one that is the document where we can find the conversation that is turn down the TV. That is the name of the conversation, turn down the TV. We have um, four uh, people in this conversation. We have Mr. Phil, Jason, then Lisa, and uh, Mr. Phil, mom, dad, and the kids. So the first sentence, Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but this is my favorite program. I know, but it's very loud. Okay, I will turn it down. That's better, thanks. Lisa, please pick up your things. They are all over the floor. In a minute, mom, I am on the phone. All right, but do it as, as soon as you hang up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, were we like this when we were kids? Definitely. So we have two problems in this uh, conversation. Number one, that the sound of the TV is very loud. And then that all the things are on the floor and mom wants to Lisa to pick all of the things that are on the floor, but she is talking on the phone. So we are going to uh, read again the sentences and we are going to say it. So um, we are going to have some groups to practice this conversation. So I'm going to divide uh, this group in some uh, small groups to practice this conversation. Vamos a hacer unos pequeños grupos para que puedan practicar la eh, conversación. Voy a dejar siempre la pantalla ahí para que ustedes puedan estar viendo lo que es la conversación. Eh, we are going to have some minutes to read the sentence, practice the sentence, and then I'm going to divide the groups. Vamos a dejar unos, un par de minutos para que ustedes puedan ir viendo las oraciones y luego los voy a dividir en pequeños grupos para que puedan ir eh, practicando de forma oral las oraciones. So, read the sentence and if you have some trouble with some words, you can ask for the eh, pronunciation or you can eh, ask if your pronunciation is good or if you can say it in a different way. So don't worry, we are learning some new words. So we have some minutes to read the sentence, then I'm going to change for the groups, then you are going to practice, and then we are going to see the second part of this uh, uh, session.
Miss Elena. Tell me. Uh, I have just the question. Um, over here we have a uh, hang up. We mm -hmm. have turn on. Pick up. And those those verbs uh, are separable or not? In this case, we have the two part verbs or phrasal verbs. These verbs mm -hmm. are used together. They are the uh, the same. In this case, cuando tenemos estos verbos los utilizamos juntos. Por eso se conocen como verbos de dos partes o eh, phrasal mm. verbs. Because they have a, a different meaning when they are together. So eh, that is very important that you are asking that about the, the verbs because we are going to develop the topic of the two part verbs that those and up, eh, turn off are part of those verbs. So in this case, we are going to use it uh, together. Oh, together, all right. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, welcome. well, the, the, the only word that I, I cannot understand correctly is goodness. Goodness. That is an expression yeah. uh, to say, it's like, oh my God. In that case, goodness uh, is uh, it's almost the same when you are saying something that is like a surprise. Oh my God, mm. oh my goodness, oh goodness, oh God. That, has, uh, that are phrases of um, surprise. Or when you are um, saying something that makes something like, in this case, they are talking about the kids. So in this case, she is like, oh, these kids are very messy. So those are four surprises. But when can we say in Spanish like caramba? Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. Like that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So now it's time to make the practice. So we have to uh, do the practice, but in this case, four, eight, 12. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to do three groups and you can um, choose who you want to be in the family. So we are going to enter the breakup rooms and the, it will appear as the message on your screen and then you have to enter the room and make the, the, the conversation and you can practice uh, saying these sentences. And I'm going to be in all of the rooms um, watching and listen to your uh, pronunciation of the sentence. So let's enter the rooms. All right, teacher. It appears the message on the screen or uh, not? No, yet. No, yet. Not yet? Okay, right now. Now see. Let's go to the breakout rooms. Did it? Oh, okay, you are not um, in a group. So I am going to send you to room number one. Uh, 
Ayan. Ayan, Jason. <laughs> okay. Thanks. And um, Lisa wants to be Lisa. <laughs> okay, if you want, I can be Lisa and who wants to be Mrs. Field? Elsie. Who will be Miss Fields? Elsie or Judith? Okay. Okay. Uh, and Lisa. Thanks, Elsie. Me. So, perfect. Uh, we okay. can begin. Please. Okay. Do you have the lines? Yes. yes. Right. Three, two, one, action. Jason, Jason, turn down the TV, please. Oh, but, it's, but the, this is my favorite program. I know, but it's pretty loud. Okay. I'll turn it down. That's better. Thanks. Yes. Who is the next? Uh, Elsie, are you? Hello, hello. Oh, hello yes, I'm here. I'm Mr. Mi Mrs. Free hello, Phil. Ladies. Mrs. Phil, yeah. Um, Lisa, yeah. please pick up your things. They're all over the floor. In a minute, Mom. I'm on the Can okay. You, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. Yes. Ah, okay. In a minute, mom, I am on the phone. All right. But do it as soon as you hang up. Lisa? I'm... I don't listen. Okay, no problem. Goodness, where we like this was. We were kids. Definitely. Hello. Um, Hello? I have sent you to some uh, breakout rooms. Don't uh, appear the message on the screen about the rooms. Yeah, but I I have I have to leave out because my connection is not good. Oh, okay. Let me see. Yes. Um, Sandra, again, I am. What? Uh, but I I have here the the conversation in my phone because. Um, I, I, I took a picture. Okay, okay, okay. So let me see if I can, uh, don't, don't enter the room number one. I am going to send you to that room, but now I am going to uh, send you again to the room number three, because in that room, there are just two people. So okay. let me change, and then I am going to move it to the room number three. If you have the message for the room number three, you can enter the room.
Fatima, you can uh, go to the room number three. You can uh, enter the room to have the practice. Loud. Okay. Okay, I'll turn that is down. That's better. Thanks. Lisa, pick up your things. They're over on the floor. In a minute, Mom, I'm on the porn. All right, but it's, there is a song as you hung up. Okay, no problem. Goodness, we're where we like this when we, we were kids. Definitely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now? Um. Okay, we are waiting just for one person that is in the breakout rooms. So we are going to uh, wait 10 seconds and then we are going to talk about the exercise. Okay, we are all here. So how was the exercise? I think it's, uh, it was uh, a little bit easy because don't have a, um, don't have had a, 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 a big uh, level of, of um, difficult, but uh, someone, someone uh, parts uh, to, to read uh, the corrido was a, a little bit uh, difficult, yes. So that's true. In this conversation, we have uh, some things that are maybe for us, uh, some basic uh, words, because we have like um, experience uh, reading in English, because this is not the first uh, um, course that you have in this uh, second language. So this conversation is kind of easy because of the pronunciation, because there are no um, really difficult words. So. In the, in the case that when we are reading something uh, really fast, we have some problems, but that is something that we are going to change with the practice. That's nothing uh, really, really hard to change. Just it is uh, a thing of practice. Uh, so you are really, really good. I was listening to your uh, conversations and your, um, Acting level is very, very good. Um, it's, it's something uh, amazing, right? We have the conversation and we have some things that we can uh, notice in this conversation that one of you said that we have some verbs that are uh, together with another part. So that is the uh, second part of this session. We have in the platform, uh, something that it says we are going to learn about the two part verbs. So in this case, we are going to begin in with this uh, topic about the verbs that are known as two part verbs. And we have here the topic and some specifications. So this topic, two part verbs. We know that a verb is an action that is performed. That is something that we did or we uh, perform in our daily life. And we have different uh, times to use the verbs. 
the past, the present, and the future. So also we have some specific rules for the uses of verbs. We have irregular and regular verbs, and we have some things that change in past. But I think that is something that we already know about the verbs. Nosotros ya conocemos algo sobre los verbos porque lo más seguro es que ya hayamos visto temas que tienen que ver con verbos. But in this case, it is just like a review of the verbs. Solo vamos a hacer como un eh, pequeño recordatorio de los verbos porque sabemos que los verbos son eh, acciones que se realizan todos los días y que son acciones que nosotros hacemos. But in this case, it says that some verbs are two part verbs and they consist and of a verb and a particle. We have two parts in these uh, two part verbs as the name says. So what is a particle? It says it is a word that has a grammatical function, but does not fit into the main part of a speech. It is not a noun. It is not a verb. It is not an adverb and do not change um, some things in the, in the verb. For example, the infinitive to into fly is an example of a particle. Also, it can also add as a preposition. Example, I'm going to Spain next week. So these particles are words that uh, have a grammatical function, but then do not change anything. And they are not part of a speech. There is no main part of the speech. El, el, la partícula esta solo nos va a, a dar una función gramatical, pero no nos va a cambiar mucho en el sentido de que obviamente solo le está dando como una función extra al verbo. Por eso parece que el infinitivo, el to, que utilizamos con el verbo infinitivo, en muchos casos no nos cambia nada, sino que solo está ahí para demostrarnos que es un infinitivo. So it's the same uh, case with the two part verbs. So. Knowing that we have that, um, like we are saying this, the verb, this uh, two part verb consists of a verb and a particle. And we have the first example. I think there is something that you have seen uh, before in a conversation, in um, something that you have read, and is the example ground up. This uh, two part verb, this is used together, run out. So, what is the use or what is the meaning of ground up? Do you know? Yes. Yes, madam. Yes? Okay. Crecer. Crecer. Yes, crecer. This is something mm -hmm. easy because we have already seen something about these uh, verbs that are the most common. So in this case, we have this one, and it is uh, talking about crecer. But in this case, we have the example, the children are growing up. In this case, we have the ing form of the verb, but it is the same. Los niños están creciendo, and that is the meaning and the function of these two part verbs. Then, often this gives the verb a new meaning. It says that this uh, function can um, add a new meaning for the verbs. We know that the verbs are action, but in this case, we are adding something else to the verb. El, estas partículas que nosotros le ponemos a los verbos nos pueden dar un significado totalmente diferente al del verbo normal. We have the... The second example that is take after. In this case, when we are talking about the uh, verb take, sabemos que take es tomar, ¿verdad? But in this case, we have the example. It says she takes after her mother. And it says, she looks like her mother, or she behaves like her mother. In this case, we are talking about an action, not just 
eh, taking something. En este caso no estamos tomando, ¿verdad? De, de tomar, de agarrar, de tener. So in this case we are uh, saying that that girl uh, looks like her mother. Se parece a su mamá. O mm -hmm. se comporta como ella. Está tomando una acción, una actitud. In this case, take after is talking about doing something like someone else or looking eh, alike with someone else, not just taking some objects, just talking about the something physical or some um, behaviors or something like that. Then we have another example. And let me, oh my God, what is this? Let me go to this. Okay. I'm going to change this. And we have another example that is count on. Count on. It says, I know I can count on you. That is the example. I know I can count on you. So we have the two part verbs in this uh, sentence and it's, the meaning is, I know I can trust you, or I know I can believe in you. In this case, count on you, contar con. Puedo contar contigo, puedo creer en ti, eh, puedo estar seguro de que me vas a ayudar en algo. So in this case, we are talking about, um, I believe. I can count on you, I can trust you, I can believe in you. So for uh, this course, I um I did something with the other groups that the last day of the week I sent the document that we are saying right now with the information. So don't worry, you are going to have this document in the group of a uh, that we have in WhatsApp. So we have you will have all the information there. So. So in this case, we have the examples. Now, we have that uh, some two part verbs have only one pattern. Uh, hay verbos que solo tienen como una función o tienen una función específica donde se tienen que escribir o cómo deben ir juntos. Now we are going to see some uh, example of this one pattern of the uh, two part verbs. So I'm going to. I need the, this information to the first part. Then I'm going to write the other example. So let me have this in this place. And I'm going to change this. This one. In this case, it is changing the, the view. So we have here. We have the other example. Some so we have in this case that is one pattern in this kind of verbs. And then we have some examples. But I'm going to divide the sentence like this we have the subject the verb the particle in the object and in the end we have that the object is like the complement of the sentence so we have first the subject then we have the verb the particle and then we have the object so the subject we have we already know that the subject are the name of the, the person. Um, there are the, uh, the pronouns that we use to uh, refer to someone. In this case, we have the children. Then the verb are growing. The particle up and the object, we don't have any object because we are saying that the children are growing up and that's enough. 
Estamos diciendo que los niños están creciendo. No le agregamos un complemento porque solo necesitamos decir que los niños están creciendo. Then we have another example. She. Then we have the verb takes, applying the rule of the third person. Then we have the particle after. Her mother. So that's the example. She takes after her mother. Then we have another example and it says, I, the verb can count the particle on and the object you. That's the sentence. I can count on you. And that's the, uh, the separation of the sentences, the subject, the verb, the particle, and the object. These two part verbs, remember that you have to write the verb and the particle together to function as two part verbs, and they can change their meaning when we use it like this. Then we have another example. So it says, in this case, when we are talking about patterns, they are talking about the, uh, the position of the verbs and the uh, particle. So in this case, we have that the order is subject, verb, particle, and object. Tenemos ese orden, ¿verdad? Que es uno de los órdenes, que es el más común, donde tenemos el sujeto, luego el verbo, el, la partícula y el objeto. That's the, uh, the, the first one. But in this case, we are going to change some uh, things in the sentences. Pero en este caso, vamos a cambiar eh, ese orden que ya tenemos en la primera parte, porque también se pueden escribir de esta otra forma. And we have in this one, I'm going to have this again in this uh, space. So we are going to see the difference. We have. In this case, the subject or the noun, then we have the verb that is the same. Then we are going to change something in this space. Noun, we have a noun or an object in this case. And then we have the particle. So in this form, we are going to change the order Tenemos ya un orden establecido, pero en este caso lo vamos a cambiar y vamos a poner la partícula al final de la oración. So, for the uh, first sentence, I'm going to change all the sentences to see the, uh, the new examples. So, we have in the subject, she, he, and we. Then, in the verb, we have gave. Knock it. We'll be leaving. And then we have the noun, the money, the glass, our friends, and we have the particle back over and behind. And that's the change in some of these sentences. But in this case, this same uh, sentence can be right in the first uh, order. Estos verbos también se pueden escribir de las dos formas, con la partícula um, justo al lado del verbo o con la partícula al final del verbo. Se pueden escribir de las dos formas. But when the object is a personal pronoun, 
phrasal verbs always have the first pattern. Pero cuando estamos utilizando eh, el objeto como un eh, pronombre personal, este tiene que seguir siempre con lo que es la primera eh, forma o con el primer orden. No se puede cambiar si sí, estamos utilizándolo como un personal pronoun. So, we have some, let's see, we are going to do some list. Vamos a hacer una pequeña lista de estos two part verbs or phrasal verbs to know the meaning and uh, how can we use it in a sentence. So, we have here common verbs. With their most frequent articles. Vamos con el primero. Let's see number one. Bring. We have the verb because we are talking about the verbs with their common uh, uh, particles. In this case, bring has the following particles about. Then we have along, we have back, forward, in, off, out, round, and up. Those are the particles that we can use with this verb. So. What are the meanings of these, um, these uh, phrasal verbs or these two part verbs? We have in the first one, bring about. We are going to do it like this. Bring about. We are going to write it like this. We have in Spanish, it's mean provocar or ocasionar. Then we have bring along. In Spanish, it means llevar algo or traer algo. Then we have bring back. That in Spanish, it means traer de vuelta or recuperar. Then we have bring forward. Bring forward, it means adelantar. Adelantar, introducir, or proponer. Bring in. Incorporar. Añadir. Bring off. Sacar. Bring out. Sacar a la luz, resaltar, realzar. Bring round. Reanimar. Converse, convencer. Hacer volver en sí. And the last one, bring up. Subir. Abordar. Mencionar. Educar. So in this case, we have just one uh, two part verbs in this case, we are just seeing bring. We know that bring 
it means traer. That's the uh, meaning of bring. But when we are using uh, these uh, particles or two part verbs, we have a lot of uh, meanings. So we have here the list of meanings when we are uh, using the particles. And it says that using it, they change the meaning. And you can see right now in the list that we can change the meaning of the verb. Podemos cambiar el, el significado del verbo al utilizarlo con estas um, eh, partículas, ¿verdad? Eh, we have a lot of meanings and a lot of uses for bring. And you can see, eh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine eh, particles and nine different eh, meanings for the same verb. So it gave us a, a lot of uses for this same eh, verb. Then we have the number two, that is buy. In this case, we have just two ways to use it. And we have out and we have up. We have just two particles for the verb buy. Then we have the number one, buy out. That in Spanish means comprar la parte. And then we have in the second one by up. And in Spanish, it's mean comprar, acaparar. In this case, we are talking about uh, buying something, but the difference between uh, these two is in the first one, we are buying just something little, una parte, not the whole thing. And in the second one, we are buying everything. So that's the difference. And by out, I am just buying one part of something. And in by up, I am uh, buying everything. So. Eh, la diferencia entre esos dos es que en una, en el buy out, yo estoy comprando una pequeña parte, no lo estoy comprando todo. But in the second one, buy up, yo estoy comprando todo el conjunto, no solo una sola parte. Por eso dice comprar la parte y en el otro comprar o acaparar porque se está comprando todo de una sola vez. Completo. Then we have number three. That is cow. But to have, we have two uh, forms, off and up. And we have four call off. That in Spanish means cancelar, retirar. And in the second one, up. It means Chica. llamar, solicitar, or recordar. Y visitar, teacher, no, no sería call up también, no. Call up, in this case, visitar. Uh -huh. mm. I think it is, yes. But in this okay. case, we are going to use it just llamar, solicitar, or recordar. But okay. you know that some verbs have, have a lot of meanings and a lot of uses. So that's another one. You're right. Number four. Carry, and we have two. Carry off and carry out. And we have the number one, carry off. That in Spanish means llevarse, llevar, llevar, reducir. So in this case, no, it's llevarse, llevar. 
Then in the second one, carry out, we have efectuar, ejecutar. Acometer. And we are going to have it like this uh, because we are going to end uh, this session right now. And we are going to see uh, tomorrow another uh, uh, verbs that we are going to have it like this in the list. So that's everything for tonight. Then we are going to see you tomorrow. Remember that in this week, we are going to have just two days. That is uh, Thursdays and Friday. And the next week we are going to have the normal uh, schedule for the classes. So for today, it's everything. Thank you for being here. And I'm sorry for being late, but tomorrow is another day. So have a good night. No worries, good teacher. Night. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank See you, teacher. Tomorrow, good night. Night. Good night. Good night. tomorrow we are going to study. Uh, yes, right. we are going to have a session tomorrow because we are uh, beginning this uh, uh, course in this day. So tomorrow we are going to have another session. Then the next week we are going to start on Monday. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.